What's going on everybody, Shri Kanasa here. So breaking down your Google Ads metrics and finding out exactly how you should be even determining what to do based on these metrics. Now, when you're running ads, it's very common to be getting results consistently based on the amount of money you're spending each day. But if you don't know how to basically understand all of the data that you're getting with the amount that you're spending and when to make the right decision as to shutting off the ad sets or improving the ads, you're really gonna spend a lot Lot of money unnecessarily especially if you're running on large budgets every single day so in this video i want to just go over the specific metrics and exactly how to know when to do what when it comes to google ads because google ads is a beast in its own there are so many things that are going on with google from finding the right products to doing proper seo optimization to optimizing your ads themselves there's a lot you have to take care of but let's find out exactly when to kill a specific ad or basically when to make changes to these ads. And in order to do this, I'm going to be taking you guys inside my Google slideshow to go over the entire slideshow along with my real Google ads account for one of my main general stores running at this moment. So it's important you stick till the end. But before starting, make sure to just pause this video for about two seconds and smash that subscribe button down below. And don't forget to like so I know how to make more videos just like these. But let's get right into it. So. Inside your Google Ads account, the first thing you will have to do before we even go over the specific metrics and how to judge the metrics is to set up your Google Ads columns similarly to mine. So pause this video for two seconds, maybe take a screenshot of this and just set it up the way I have it set up. So in the proper order, you want it from impressions and click CTR average CPC all the way over here to the right where it's invalid click rate and invalid click. So you want all of your columns to be like this because these are some of the main columns that you should be looking at when it comes to specifically Google ad. But as you guys can clearly see, I look at a lot of data, but, but the main thing you want to understand is you don't have to look at all of these specific columns here to make the calculated decisions we'll be going over. But let's go ahead and go on over to our slideshow and understand a little bit more. So when it comes to the specific metrics, you want to understand that some of the most important metrics are the conversion value over cost. And by the way, this is laid out in proper level of importance, meaning that at the top, it's the most important at the bottom. It's kind of the least important. You don't have to really pay much attention to that. So at the very top, we have conversion value over cost, basically telling you your return on ad spend. Number two is CTR, your click through rate. Number three is cost per conversion, meaning your CPP. Number four, average CPC, then followed by impressions, click search impression share and click share. So in the order of importance, this is exactly what I look at to determine the performance of my ads that are currently running, what I should do with the ads and so forth. But there are several different ways to judge your ads. But the most important one you want to understand is that you want to be judging your ads based on past three days to seven days worth of data. Basically, when it comes to Google ads, you want to understand that looking at the individual products is just as important as looking at your entire campaign as a whole. And the reality behind this is when inside your Google shopping campaign, if you're following my strategies, which I've laid out on my channel, you're most likely running a general testing campaign, which tests all of your products from your store. In this case, we want to kind of look at it at an individual product view, as well as a view as a whole at the campaign. Because when you're testing so many different products inside of one campaign within so many different niches, it's bound to have a lot of varying data. So you can't really make quick decisions based on the individual product level. You have to kind of look at the whole and see all of the things from impressions to the click share to search impression to make the decisions. And some of the other things which I look at as a whole are the audiences that I have running. Maybe if I have some audiences inside the campaign, the devices, which device is doing well, is it mobile only or PC, desktop or tablets? That's followed by keywords. Maybe I have a few keywords which are spending the most money but aren't really that profitable. Maybe location. Maybe I'm targeting different countries in the world and I'm just noticing that only US is giving me the most amount of sales. So all of these things significantly impact your ad. So it's really not beneficial to be looking at just the individual product level because there are just so many different things going on at a moment of time with your Google ads. But in addition, you want to understand that there is a certain level of account maturity, meaning if your account has been running for only less than two weeks, you most likely don't have sufficient data to even judge your ads at all. So in this case, what I would recommend is that you give Google time because Google, again, is a time based platform. The more time you give Google, the better it's going to perform over time. So the account maturity matters significantly when it comes to the results that you're getting with your ads. But generally, you want to understand that even after this account maturity level, which is kind of achieved after the two week to maybe four week period, 
you want to understand that the testing campaign that you will have on your Google Shopping Ads account will generally be unprofitable and that is completely fine. I'm going to go ahead and go on over to my Google campaign right now to show you guys exactly the results from the beginning until now to show you how the process works and then we're going to cover the main metrics and how to basically determine what to do when and how to determine results based on the metrics. So let's go ahead and go on over to the Google Ads account. So the main general testing campaign I have running is this one right here which is this second one and I began running this specific campaign back in uh, mid-November. So let's go ahead and look at November's data of 2019 to see exactly how everything was looking during that time period. So around 5th of November to 30th of November. So as you can see, this campaign was actually not running because I have made other several general testing campaigns before. So let's actually go ahead and go on to when this campaign was specifically started because this is actually my main one. So as you can see, around December 1st to December 30th, I actually began running this specific campaign. And during this time period, I spent around $114.60 to get back only four sales for a total cost per conversion value of $28 per sale sale with a ROAS of 1.88. So clearly not the best return on ad spend. But over time, let's go ahead and look at January. So January 1st to 31st, that's when I really found my main winning products and the stats significantly went up. So as you can see, I spent $952 for the month of January just on this campaign to get back 47 conversions at $20 per conversion with the ROAS of 4.11, a big, big difference. And this only happened because I was accurately looking at this data and making calculated decisions based on this data. Because because unlike Facebook ads, we really cannot just shut off a campaign because it is unprofitable. Why? That's simply because we're testing multiple products inside this one campaign. With Facebook, we would test one product per campaign. And if that campaign was doing bad, that meant the product was doing bad and we could make a decision very quickly. It's not the same with Google ads, as you can clearly see. So let's go ahead and look at the February 1st to around February 18th, which is yesterday's date. And we can see that this specific campaign, again, has spent $760.43 to get back about 41 conversions at a total cost of $18 per sale. And the ROAS, again, has increased to 7.55. So clearly, over the two to three month period, this has significantly went up. And there are, again, several reasons why this happened. But let's go and start looking at the specific main metrics. So as I had mentioned in slide number two, I look at these specific metrics from order of importance from top to bottom. So that's exactly what I do over here. The first metric I always look at is the conversion value over the cost. So if we go over here, we can see that it is this specific value right here. And the reason why this is the main metric is because it is your ROAS, meaning your return on ad spend how much are you spending and how much are you getting back right now for the month of february the ROAS it says 7.55 meaning for every dollar i'm spending on this campaign i'm getting roughly seven dollars and 55 cents back so that's an amazing return on ad spend and something you should be aiming at but as you guys saw, I did not achieve it overnight. There were a lot of things I had to do. The general criteria you want to understand is that if the ROAS is below 1.5, it is too low. Even a, usually a general ROAS of below two is too low. And that was the case for this specific campaign in December, as you guys saw. If we go ahead and go back to December, we can see that clearly the ROAS was 1.88, so it wasn't really profitable at all. The main thing I understood is that there were several things that were going wrong in this case for me. Number one, I either had a too low of a bid or number two, my products were really not that high quality. It was really easy to fix lower bid because all I did was just increase my bid by about five cents. And what I noticed is that the green area where my campaign was performing the best was around the 45 cent bid. Now, of course, this is going to be different for every single ad account for me and my ad account, it was around 45 cents. But the harder part was actually adding the higher quality products because this is not something you'll know directly since the products that you do have on your campaign will still spend money, but you won't be sure whether these products are good or not until number one, they've fully spent their profit margin or number two, they started getting you some sales. In this case, my products were getting me clicks and everything and it was spending money, but unfortunately it was not getting me sales. So that told me that I had both these issues and that's exactly what I began to work on. So that's exactly what should let you know that you need to work on your bid or your, your products. If your conversion value over cost is less than 1.5 or it is generally even less than two. Next thing I look at is the CTR. 
Overall, if you have a lower than 1% CTR, that means you're doing something wrong. Your product images are not up to date. Maybe it's your product pricing, but those two things mostly are the issues. If we go ahead and look at this specific CTR for the campaign, we can see that it was 0.54 in the month of December 1st to December 31st. So as you guys can clearly see it was right below the 1%, meaning it was really, really bad. I had to do anything just to fix that up. So what I did is I started improving my product images. I started maybe playing around with the pricing and did some of the product research one more time for those products which were getting me clicks. And if we go ahead and look at January, we can see that the CTR because of those changes increased significantly to 0.87. This is exactly what boosted my quality score up and what led to a lower cost per conversion in the month of January compared to December. So clearly this led to a higher conversion value over the cost as well, meaning a higher return on ad spend. In February, I made even some more significant changes. And as you guys can see, it jumped up above a 1%. This is what you want to be aiming for when it comes to the CTR to really give Google the clear clear sign that you are selling the right products to the right audience and what Google is going to do is it's going to reward you with a higher quality score. As you can see, as my CTR went up, my cost per conversion value went down significantly and my ROAS went up significantly as well. So those three things kind of correlated to each other because my CTR went up, my overall cost of running this campaign went down. That's exactly what you should want to do. And the first indicator that your CTR is really bad is if it's below 1%. If it is, you want to immediately stop adding new products and just focus on the products you have already added. It could mean removing the products with really low CTR or changing their images up. What I've noticed is changing the images really makes a big impact. An alternative you can do, and this is something I do after changing the image isn't really impacting it at all, is basically lower the price. But that's one great way to boost your CTR. And one specific metric I have my eyes on consistently. The third metric I look at consistently is my cost per conversion value. And this is important and number three on my list simply because it lets you know if if you're right on your target for your cost per purchase. Unlike Facebook ads, you're gonna have a varying cost over conversion for Google because you're gonna be testing multiple different products inside your general testing campaign. As you can see, if we go back to my specific campaign, my cost per conversion for this campaign was $19. You may think that this is too high, but you have to consider the fact that I have a lot of products ranging from $30 all the way up to $500 inside this general testing campaign getting sold. So that means this is a great cost per conversion to have, and this is gonna vary a lot because of the wide range of products I have within my campaign. And and this is number three on my list because again, number one is this value right here. If this is positive, then you really don't need to be worrying about this. But still, nonetheless, if you still want to know what your average should be, what you want to do is you want to determine the average profits of all of the products inside your store. Maybe majority of the products at $20 profit margin, some at 30, then your average would be around $22, $23 or so. Then what you want to know is that if your cost per conversion for the campaign is higher than that $22 or $23, that means you want to maybe lower the bid because you're bidding too much to gain the customers and to gain the sale. Usually with the lower bid, you're gonna start getting the same sale for a lower price and a lower cost. So that's what you wanna be aiming for. The fourth thing you wanna be looking at is your average CPC. Again, a very important metric to be looking at because the lower it is, the better it is for you. Optimally, you want it to be less than 50 cents. But of course, if you're selling products over $1,000, this is gonna be way, way higher than 50 cents. So it kinda of depends on your store, Majority of the dropshipping stores, however, should aim for 50 cents or lower. If it is higher though, you want to lower the bid and or SEO optimize again. If you're unsure as to how to SEO optimize properly, I have a whole video on this on my channel, which you can check out after this video. But let's go ahead and go on over to my Google Ads campaign one more time. So if we look at uh, December one more time, let's see exactly what my CPC was during that time. So as you can see, it was crazy high during that time, about 29 cents. That's mainly because this Google ads account was new. Google was trying to get data for the products I had on my store. Flash forward to about January 1st, January 31st, we can see that it significantly decreased by around 11 cents to 18 cents in total. And as you can see, overall my metrics over the board were starting to improve. I was starting to get a better return on ad spend as well. And flash forward to February, you can see that this significantly decreased one more time to 14 cents. And again, my conversion value over cost was increasing as well. So everything in Google Ads is very, very interrelated. One slight change in one thing can lead to a big change in a lot of other things as well, which is why you want to take these things into account and make changes based on that. But 
moving on to our next section the next thing you want to be focusing on is the number of impressions because without any impressions you're not going to get any clicks without any clicks you're not going to get any sales and usually in my own experience what i've noticed is that the reason why i don't get any impressions is because i have a bid that is too low for my product so one of the easiest ways to fix this is to just increase your bid by five to ten cents because ideally if you're running at a twenty dollars to twenty five dollar a day budget and after the warm-up period of around two weeks you should be getting a minimum of 500 to a thousand impressions daily if you don't there is some kind of issue so that's one of the main metrics you want to be looking at because that again determines what kind of results you get right now in around 18 days as you guys can see i've gotten around 454 thousand impressions which equates to about 25 thousand impressions per day and as you can see i'm only running up the campaign at a budget of 40 dollars a day but of course this is a several month old account which is why it is getting so many impressions every day for a newer account maybe in the two to four week period you should definitely be getting around a thousand impressions a day especially if you have a sizable amount of budget but in addition to that the final two things i look at are the search impression share and the click share now these two things they're not kind of the main metrics because these are just rather competitive metrics which let you know how your ads are performing to some other competitors but usually for the search impression share if you have a less than 10 percent search impression share that means you're not getting the amount of search impression shares that you should be now if you go back to my specific google ads campaign so the search impression share is one of the columns which you should have added by now based on what i have done here so right now for the month of february the search impression share is around 20 percent for my general testing campaign if we look at january when things weren't the best we can see that the search impression share was about 17%. So it was much lower than what it is now. And again, going back to about uh, December, December was actually around 17% as well, but the results weren't up to par because of our other metrics. But search impression share, again, is going to let you know how you're doing compared to your other competitors, how many search impressions you're actually getting versus how many you can actually win in total. So in total, I'm only getting 17% of the search impression shares than what I should be getting, which is not a bad thing when it comes to a general testing campaign. But this metric tells you a lot of things. The first thing is that if this is less than 10%, that is considered a bad search impression share. You're not getting enough search impression shares to be getting enough sales. So there are several things you can do in this case. Number one, you can increase the bid by again, five cents to 10 cents. And number two, you can try increasing the budget. These two things directly impact your search impression shares. But of course, be sure that you can still remain profitable because again, the number one thing is this value right here. If your ROAS is bad, there is no point in improving your search impression share. So you want to make sure that your other metrics are still met along with this. But the second thing is click share again, how many clicks you're getting compared to what you can actually be getting in total. And again, less than 10% is considered bad. If we go back, we can see that around December 1st to December 31st for my click share, which is not one of the columns, you would have to go inside bar graph at the top, go to competitive metrics and choose the last option, which is click share. You can directly hover over and see what your click share is for a given day. So as you can see, my click share was ranging around 10% to 11% during December. And if we go ahead and go to January, we can see that it still was kind of fluctuating over time, but overall it was around 10% and then later on it kind of increased to 12% and so forth. But you want to kind of keep it around the 10% or more than 10%. Anything below 10% consistently means you may be bidding too low. So one of the easiest ways to battle that is just increase the bid. But that is exactly how you should be measuring your metrics and exactly how you know when to make what kind of change when it comes to Google ads. If you found any type of value in this video, smash that like button and smash that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.